Welcome to episode 240 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host. And today we're going to talk about what it feels like to leave it all on the field. All of it. Every drop. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So I talked about it last week. You knew it was coming. A SOTUCon 2022, which is the big event that we put on in Philly, September 11, 12, 13th, is now history. We put on the event last week, and it, let me just say, it exceeded my expectations. And based on the feedback we're getting, it blew the minds of the people that attended. And the reason it did that is because we were intentional about making people the center of the experience and not the subject matter being the center of the experience, which was the automotive industry and being better retailers and being having better company culture and all those things. People were the center. And I use the word experience too because we focused on creating an experience for people. Now, because we did that, there are some things that don't go normal or don't go as planned because everyone has in their mind what a conference is supposed to be. Just like everybody understand, understood what a camera was supposed to be before a phone came out or a digital camera came out. Right? A camera's supposed to have film, a camera's supposed to develop, you know, all that. And so um, attendees, hands down, had a phenomenal experience. Um, I, think some of, I think some of our sponsors who really partnered with us to help do this kind of groundbreaking event are still not quite sure what it is that we did. Um, in some instances, you know, it, it, it had, I guess, from a traditional conference mode, it had a peculiar taste about it, right? It wasn't like exhibit hall where everyone goes around and scans badges and gets chased and tries not to get chased and chases. It wasn't all that. Actually, it was a lot of meaningful conversation, a lot of deep relationships. And by the way, after the conference, right, we're going to be releasing a bunch more stuff. So if you're not following along on the social media channels and you want to kind of understand what happened at a SOTUCon, because um, we had some amazing guests, right? We had Claude Silver from Vayner Media. We, have Dave, we had David Meltzer. We had Jim McKelvey, who is the co-founder of Square, the payments company, co-founded it with Jack Dorsey. Um, we just had a, a bunch of great content. You can follow along uh, like on LinkedIn at a SOTU, A-S-O-T-U. Um, you know, or a SOTUCon, or you could go to a SOTU.com and uh, check out what we're doing over there. I think you'll like it and have a good time. Uh, we put our heart and soul into it every day. The reason I wanted to talk about today, though, wasn't to give you a review of what happened. It was to share the experience that I had of what it felt like to leave it all on the field. And when I talk about leaving it all on the field, like, I think you know what I mean, but I'll explain it. So, when you compete in athletics, right, on a field, when you go out there and you play at the end of the game, if you did it right, you should be completely exhausted and expended, meaning you have nothing left, meaning you left it all on the field. That means your physical ability, your emotional ability, your mental ability, right? You focused on the task at hand, which was to play and compete at the highest level, and it was to win. And a SOTUCon, let me tell you, I've never left it all on the field like I did to the point of exhaustion. Um, you know, some people are like, well, that's not healthy. And I understand that. But I'm like, hey, like Seth Godin says it best. No one ever wrote a book or will ever write a book that is called, is titled, How to Run a Marathon Without Getting Tired. No one will ever write a book with that title because... It's impossible to run a marathon without getting tired. It's impossible to run a marathon well without being totally exhausted and leaving it on the field. But actually what prepares you for the ability to run a marathon is a life of balance and attention to the important things and cultivating your body and cultivating your training. And so um, an event like a SOTUCon where you know hundreds of people came and depended on us to serve them and provide them a great experience really took a long time of planning and preparation and cultivating our own internal relationships, cultivating the, you know, all of the things that needed so that we could leave it on the field. We had a couple hiccups for sure. Just by nature of the event on Sunday night, we had a welcome reception and the venue that we actually had the event at, not the welcome reception, but the main event um, is this big sports arena in the middle of all the ballparks in Philly. 
and uh, Sunday was opening week for the NFL. Eagles opening day was Sunday. So in this venue, up until 5 p.m., everybody, you know, the Eagles fans were piled in, watching the game, eating food, having drinks, having a great time. And so we actually couldn't load a single thing into that building until like 6 o'clock at night. And the event started at like breakfast was like at 7 o'clock the next morning. And we're not just talking about like carrying in some trinkets. We, lo we built a full gigantic stage and stage props. There was a giant letters on the stage there was signage all over the place there were you know the the vinyl that goes on top of the the entry doors they installed all of that stuff all of it sound we had video everywhere we had lighting throughout the entire venue main area side stages we built side stages and backdrops and a podcast booth and sound checks we couldn't start doing any of that not moving one thing into the building till six which means as you're setting up technical things come up issues come up Guess what time we went to bed? Like 2 or 3 a.m. Only to have a, like a 5 a.m. call time to be back in the next morning. So running on two or three hours of sleep is not how I'm wired. But guess what? We did it. Our whole team showed up the next morning. Went through the whole day. Another late night. Got another three or four hours of sleep the second night. Came back on Tuesday. Did it again. And when it was done, we were exhausted. And if you're going to leave it all on the field, you better... Be passionate about why you're doing that or you're like, I'm never doing that again. Guess what? We left the event inspired and energized because we knew we were doing it for an amazing reason. One of those reasons is the fact that we know some of the best human beings we know are auto dealers. And the stigma of auto dealers is actually opposite of what anyone that, that was at that event experienced. So we envision a future where dealers are seen for who they really are and not, for the, not from the stigma that people will tell you they are. Like the actual facts, I know if you're not in the auto industry, I, um, I am making a case for retail auto dealers, actually. You know, you'll hear people like Carvana talk bad about them. You'll hear stuff about like people complaining, but the reality is there's a company called Dealer Raider that does uh, open source reviews for car dealers and over 8 million reviews, 94% of them are positive experiences. So um, that's why we're passionate. These are people that serve their communities. Um, <laughs> so many conversations happened. Where people said like literally my life was changed we ended every single day without talking about automotive we ended the day every main session at the end of the day was actually about people about the heart that's why we had claude silver close out the final day talking about leading with heart and head building um building on top of empathy focusing on treating the whole person the day before that david Meltzer ended up uh, end of the day, speaking about a lot of the same stuff. And so today, it's Friday when I'm recording this. I am absolutely spent. I left it on the field. I still have my Asotokan scarf around my neck. And guess what? I think it's healthy to leave it all, all on the field. My 16-year-old son, Miles, um, he's part of our editing crew and our production crew. And he pushed really, really hard uh, in that really late night, and he's not used to staying up really late and burning, burning the oil like that. He got up with me the next morning. I knew he was like beat, beat. But I, you know, he said, is everybody else going to be there? I was like, yeah. He's like, then, I get, then I'll be there. Woke up, went, his body shut him down. He started puking and feeling terrible. He went back. I was like, oh, crap, is he sick? No, he was just exhaustion. He pushed himself to exhaustion. And, and my wife was like, oh, man, you know. Like, she, she did what a good mother's supposed to do and say, like, hey, let's not running too hard. As a dad, I'm like, I'm glad he got to that point because I think he just learned about what it was like to leave it all on the field. And as a father, I couldn't be more proud of him. So I want to encourage you not to take it easy. I want to encourage you not to be afraid of exhaustion, not to be afraid of working incredibly hard towards something that you believe in um, to an incredible extent. You have to have a life of balance. You have to have a life of training. But there's no way to run a marathon without getting tired. And I hope you get to experience the same thing that I have, which is leaving it all on the field for something that matters. Thanks for spending time with me this week. I will see you next week. We came to fight.